Hello, welcome to Prayers One, where we speak matters marriage. We've been looking at the whole picture around Genesis, the beginning, understanding what marriage is about, understanding what happened in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, the original order of things, and then what went wrong in chapter 3. Yeah. As we were speaking in the last segment, we spoke about help, Eve as help, Ezra, one who is brought alongside to accomplish a task. We looked at what God had designed originally. We looked at the pattern behind what God had designed. Then we realized that something has shifted. So Isa is who she was supposed to be from the beginning. Mm. But once the serpent came in, something happened and she shifted into something else. And we, for us to understand this, Susan is going to take us through this pattern. Okay, that's a um, powerful topic which I believe every woman needs to listen to. And of course, not just for women, even for the men to understand Isa and to understand their role or their role in God as men. And we talked about Isa being a helpmate, mm. being a helpmate. Mm. But we need to look back and say, what makes an Isa change her identity? Yes. What is it that makes an Isa, a helpmate, have a new way of operations that does not complement either the man or the vision of which they are supposed to be mm -hmm. fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's good that we're discussing together so that of course we'll discuss about the men, yes. so that the men does, yes. do not think that I'm bashing them. But really, um, when Adam does not align himself with the creator and therefore has no purpose, he has no life vision, he does not know what to do, and then there's this Isa who is supposed to be helping him. Now, you realize you already have a problem. Absolutely. So let's talk about the man to understand what makes the woman change her identity and become this thing that God talked about in Genesis 3.16. Mm -hmm. That your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Mm -hmm. Let's discuss the position of the men when the men are not taking their place. Let's start in Genesis 3, 6, and 7, mm -hmm. where the Bible says, and the woman saw, the woman took the woman ate, I'm yes. paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. The next thing, and she gave her husband, who, who was, was with her. her. Yes. Already we have a problem. <laughs> the man was there. Who have a problem? Yes. We have a problem because what is the man doing there? Mm -hmm. He has an assignment. She's supposed to with, be with him in the assignment. Something has shifted positionally. Something has shifted so positionally that now she's drawing something from outside of the original mandate and she's bringing it into him. So the reality is, women, there is, you are a life giver. You have got this vulnerability to always want to draw sources of life. But man, if you have not created a parameter for it, because if you go back into the conversation, you will pick up a few things between the serpent and Eve. Yeah. You'll pick up the query where the serpent said, did God say you should not eat from every tree? And Eve said, no, 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 God didn't say that. Remember, Eve didn't hear from God. Eve heard from who? From Adam. Mm -hmm. And what did she say? Not from every tree. In fact, only this tree, she even goes on to say, we should not even touch it lest we die. I usually say this is Adam's problem right there. Yes. Where did she get the idea of you should not touch it? See, Adam, like all of us men, sometimes we think the only way you can get a woman to understand is by creating some rules. That's where the <laughs> first rule came in and caused a problem. Yeah. God had said do not eat. He did not ever said anything about touching. So I think the emphasis was, did you hear what I said? Don't even touch it. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying this is what is in the scripture. I'm saying you can infer from her comment yes. where her understanding came from. And the Bible says he was there with her. Mm. Wait. She's supposed to be with him. him. He's now with, with her. her. Mm. Positionally wrong. Mm. Secondly, when she gives him to eat, who has the mandate that says do not eat? Mm. Adam. That's where leadership comes in. Leadership comes. Now if Adam was elsewhere in the garden, Eve went and ate, and then went looking for Adam, it's an entirely different tree. Yes. It's an issue Story, of pure yeah. rebellion. Mm -hmm. But here it's an issue of they are together. Mm. That means he's also fascinated. That means he also is interested in finding out how this thing tastes. So he's complicit to this activity. He's in agreement. After all, the Bible tells us in chapter 3, verse 6, that Eve ate. Do you know nothing happened? Their eyes were not opened. Nothing affected them. But the minute Adam ate 
the Bible says, their eyes. Talk of oneness. I think that's where men need to realize. When we say that the man is the head, Yes. And the man is the leader. The man yes. should take his position. We are simply saying that, listen, when Adam ate, everything happened. Everything. Everything happened. That is proof of his position. Mm. Bible says he ate their eyes. How can Eve's be, eyes be opened when Adam eats? Yes. That shows you God's functional position mm. from the word go. Yeah. And so because of that, fast forward, God talks later, Jesus talks later about um, uh, Peter writes and talks about washing the wife, Paul, washing your wife with water of the word and bringing her. Why? Because you're the one who let her out. Mm, mm. You're Wash the one who needs to bring wife. her back in. Yes. This is the principle being discussed here. But having said that, what happens? The minute that goes on, the next thing Adam does, which is wrong, is he doesn't take responsibility for being wrong. He actually passes it on. He blames the woman. It is the woman that you, God, brought to me let me ask the question <laughs> when adam show when god shows up in the garden who does he ask for he adam. asks for adam well. is it that he doesn't know the progression he knows he knows the progression he knows eve ate first mm, mm. he doesn't talk to eve yeah he knows the conversation with the serpent he doesn't talk to the serpent i think he's showing us the order he says adam is in charge mm. irrelevant of who yes whether the serpent spoke whether eve ate so this is a divine adam order. is the the one who sets the rules. Mm. This mm. is where the word rule comes from. Yes. To rule comes from the word ruler. Mm. Ruler is in a mathematical ruler. Mm. The one who sets the measurements. Mm. The one who designs how everything functions. That's Adam. The one who determines the parameters of operation. Mm. So when Adam set the parameters of operation, when that parameter is violated, God comes to the one he gave that assignment. Mm. So when Adam God comes to Adam, instead of Adam acknowledging that he has been deficient in his assignment, he blames Eve. And he starts the blame game. And he's blaming Eve and God. Yes. And that, man, is one of our key issues. I'd like to say this. <laughs> At the point Adam is doing this, he has already violated, he has already fallen. So it is easier to acknowledge the fall. Mm -hmm. God asked him such a simple question. You know, men, we are very interesting. When we <laughs> ask hard questions, we answer very well. Simple mm -hmm. questions, we get very complicated. Mm -hmm. When a woman asks you something like, what were you doing today? It's a simple question. You complicate You it. get into a very complex structure of what do you think I was doing? I mean do you think? Wait, <laughs> simple. Simple question. God asks Adam, where are you? Simple answer. <laughs> I'm here. What is his answer? <laughs> I heard your voice. I was afraid. I was afraid. Who asked all I those hid. questions? Have you eaten? It is this woman. Listen, all the questions are being deflected. Yeah. What does that tell you? When you are not in your kingdom position, you will keep giving the wrong answers. Oh, I think that is something that we all need to think you about. You will men. keep giving the wrong answers, you'll keep deflecting, and you'll have all sorts of reasons. Men, what answers are you giving right now? Yes. It can tell you where you are. So what happens, man? Once you decide it is the woman's fault via wow. God, the next thing you start doing is you now want to control the woman. Mm. Because after all, she's the one who brought the problem, we need to deal with her. No, she didn't. Mm. You're the one who abdicated your position. It's so funny that scripture nowhere says Eve fell. It says Eve was deceived. Mm. It says Adam fell. Mm. Isn't that interesting? God could have said Eve fell and Adam followed. Bible says, for the woman was deceived. deceived. So the woman is susceptible to deception. But the man is the one who's supposed to keep her in the word to avoid deception. Oh. Mm. It's a simple context. I think that's taking man back to their position when we, when we say, man, take back your role. Yes. We are not saying come back to provision, pay rent and all those kind of things. We'll discuss those things later. But I think when you talk of men taking back their position, taking back their place, this is what we are saying, that come to the place where you set the rules. You are the one who has the measurements. Set the rules for your family, yes. which they are not. And we'll see that in Genesis 2.16, why they are not doing that. Genesis 3.16, where God is talking to the woman and he says to the woman, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children and then he says something interesting your desire shall be for your husband and he 
shall rule over you. And I want us to discuss mm. that. Your desire shall be for your husband. Like we've said this uh, before in other sessions, the desire of man and woman was supposed to be for God. Yes. Now her desire, the word desire there is the same word. You will try to assert authority over your husband. In this fallen position, you will try to assert authority. Why are you doing that? Because if we see where Adam was seated, Adam was not in vision. Mm. He was not in purpose. Mm. He was not in his calling. So what did he do? He sat back mm. and allowed her to stand. When yes. she stood, she did something that caused humanity a whole lot of problem. So Adam did not take his place. Same thing today, when the Adam in a marriage does not take his position, the automatic thing for an Isa who has the ability to sustain life and to give life is to accept that authority. Mm -hmm. Now when she takes over, she desires her husband, she takes his position. When she does that, the man who was meant to rule her starts ruling over her. There you Maybe go. you need to discuss those two words. Now, there's a big difference between ruling and ruling over. Yeah. To rule is to, one, set the boundaries and the measurements. Mm -hmm. To rule means to set the parameters in which things should function. To rule means to take charge of things, yes. but rulership also connotes protection mm. and provision. Yes, You create the environment where everybody is nurturing. Mm. When a king rules over a nation, mm -hmm. his subjects are supposed to benefit from his rule. Yes, In scripture, every time there's a good king, meaning someone who's ruling mm -hmm. properly, yes. there is prosperity. Mm -hmm. When there is a bad king, righteousness exalts a nation, there is trouble. So a king is supposed to rule, set the parameters of life. Jesus is king of kings. He's the ruler of rulers. Yes. He set the parameters by which the kingdom agenda can be carried out. Mm -hmm. So the man was supposed to hear from God. That becomes his boundary. That becomes his rulership mandate. Okay. That becomes what he brings into the environment that mm. the woman operates in. Mm -hmm. That thing he brings is so good because in it is designed the design the woman has. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, whatever I'm bringing to you, you are capable of fulfilling because God designed you that way. Yes. That's, All right? That's true. So I'm not bringing something that can harm you, something that can uh, distort you, yes. something that can kill you. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to actually mm -hmm. make you flourish, Flour yes. make you grow, yes. make you expand, mm. make you operate. I mean, let's take the simplest subjugation principle. Yeah. And this is the worst thing. Mm -hmm. When a man rules over, he sets rules, and even women can enforce those rules, not only men. Mm. Mm -hmm. you don't this is very crucial. Okay. And I'll tell you why this is crucial. Yes. See, a man was supposed to rule, not rule over. Yes. So the counterfeit of ruling is ruling over. Mm. Ruling is creating an environment where everybody thrives. Yes. Ruling over is creating an environment where the leader is not threatened. Mm. So the leader now sets the limit of what people can be based on him. So if the leader has a small limit, you can imagine how people are going to suffer in that environment. Mm. All right? Now, let's bring it home. There are environments where we have been told that um, some cultures where the men have set up a sin system that women must cut their hair. Yes. The Bible tells us the woman's hair is her glory. Mm. What does and that she tell? is the glory of the man. And she is the, the glory man. of the man. Yes. So, if she's got beauty in that context, that beauty reflects... The man. On the man. Yes. So the man sets a new rule. Women must cut their hair. Let me ask you, do men cut women's hair? No. It's other women who will enforce it. So when you have a wrong system, even the easers function wrong. Because let's take one of the worst scourges in humanity today, mm. FGM. Yes. All right? Who initiated FGM? Men. Men. Why? This mentality of subjugation, ruling over, yes, so that true. women's desires, you see, trying to do it in the flesh, yes. so that women's desires can be managed and controlled. That is already the fall. Mm. But who carries out FGM? The women. Do you see how wicked that system becomes? Yes. Until a generation comes that begins to rebel. Mm. Because 
the human being was designed that if one rules over you, you rebel. You rebel. The problem is the one ruling over is in Genesis chapter 3. Yes. The one being ruled over and rebelling is rebelling from Genesis chapter, chapter three. 3. So none of them have stood up to say, wait a minute, there was something else in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 yes. where God intended us to work together, not to ru you rule me, yes. not rule over me. Yes. I think if we understood that as women, there's a very big difference. And we said again, rule here is not defined by the Oxford Dictionary. Yes. We're not talking about bossing over somebody. We are saying no setting parameters of how we as a couple will work. That is ruling. Let me explain a concept yeah? of ruling that may help. Mm. God gives Moses a design of a temple in the heavens. Then God says, I have filled Bezalel with the spirit of God, Ezra, that he may build that which you have seen. Bezalel comes and designs the tabernacle which till today is a pattern of things in the heavens. True, true. But let's go a few steps before they do this. In the absence of Moses, the one who has the rule, the design, mm -hmm. the same Bezalel built a calf. So the problem is not Bezalel's skill. The problem is who sets the rules. The rules so yes. when we say the man sets the rules, it means I am not trying to create a system that is not beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is good. But the woman then flourishes in that system. It's not a system of control, it's a system of expansion. Of expansion. And I yes. think when the man um, does not align himself with the creator and therefore has no divine purpose, yes. he gets a new purpose yep. of trying to capture Eve. Yes. Go after Eve and capture her. <laughs> now you have captured this Eve, she's in your house and you have no vision, Simple. no mission. No divine your purpose. Your vision is not bigger than your and house. <laughs> and I think Eve is <laughs> wondering, I'm supposed to be help, uh, bringing help, but uh, to what? So when man captures an Eve, his mission ends. Look at it this way, people. Mm -hmm. This is funny, but it's true. Yeah. Culture tells you you're grown up now. You need to marry. You need a house. You Wait. need a house first. What do you need? A house. Uh -huh. Now you have a house. You're a man. What is the next thing? <laughs> I feel it with a wife. <laughs> Capture a wife, and then Capture. what do you do? Yeah. Limit her to what? To mm -hmm. your vision, which is what? The house. Because I didn't know That's what I got. Now that I have a house, from. and now I have a wife, what does she become? A housewife. Our housewife. Her, her vision is limited to go and buy groceries. So let's ask a question. Go is, and buy bread. Is she your wife, or is she the wife of the house? It's called culture, confusion of culture. But what we are trying to say is, men, without a vision, you will capture Eve. You are not meant to capture. You are meant to captivate. captivate. When you captivate a woman, you are attracting her to the vision that God has shown you. Yes. Remember you said uh, earlier that um, a man needs to be in God. Yes. And in God, he sees a vision. Yes. And that's the vision that he's now trying to pursue in life. And that is where, again, maybe this will mention, it's off our topic, but it's something good to mention. Mm. When people say, I have a purpose. Yes. What is your life purpose? Mm -hmm. You don't have a purpose. And maybe that's something good to tell people. Yes. You don't have a purpose. God has a purpose. God has something he's doing. Then you are part of that purpose. God has a purpose for your life. Yes. You find that purpose, yes. it becomes your purpose. Your purpose. But so you don't have your own purpose. Yes. I mean, let's look at this, this bride called the church. Okay. What is the vision of Christ? Mm. The earth. Go and make disciples of all Nations. Nations. So the mandate he gave us is what? Mm -hmm. It's as big as his vision. Yes, because that is huge. Yes. I mean, when you're told to go to the nations, I mean, that's big. You won't do it without an Isa, the Thank helper, you. the Holy Spirit. And I think when we talk of a woman capturing, um, uh, a man capturing a woman, when she finds no place to flourish, flourish where she can nurture something, there are no ideas, there are no seeds, there's nothing. She now captures the man. Yes. Now she Reversal. becomes the one, yeah, now she has reversed the Now she wants roles. to rule. She's yeah. become a capturer, mm -hmm. she's become a ruler. Now she's the she ruler. She rules over. Yes. And now when she does that, this is where God said, you will try to rule, to, you will desire him. You will assert authority. But when you do that, he will rule over you. Yes. You get now the cycle starts. But the question is, there's a woman sitting and watching and asking, I'm supposed to be nurturing a seed. What about me who is sitting with a man in the house who has no clue he's supposed to have a seed? 
This is where we start. Mm -hmm. Ground zero. Yes. Ground zero works like this. Yeah. Woman, what's your core structure? Helper. Helper, yes. Man, what's your core structure? Rule. So if you're a man listening to me, my message to you, not to the woman. Woman, <laughs> move aside. Yeah, I'm talking to the man here. <laughs> yeah. You have one assignment. God, why am I here? Mm. Forget mm. all these many things you think you're doing. I'm trying to fix this, fix that. Listen, you're like somebody filling a bottle that has a hole. Yes. You can pour all the water you want. It's going to still come back to where the hole is. Okay. So your first assignment. Mm. What's my assignment, God? Show me. Ministers, if we cannot lead people to their assignment, close your church. It's the wow. primary call. Wow. It's the primary call of God to bring everybody back to himself. So, so if people, if men, you see, we have too many women meetings at church and no men meetings. Mm, wrong order. Wrong order. So are we saying that men, anyone like what you're saying now, listening yes. to you, they are, there's a question God is asking. Where are you? That's the question. That's it. That's the echo from the garden to to date. God is asking, where are you? Yes. That's all he's asking you. And yes. why is he asking you that? Because he's telling you, as a man, you're in the wrong place. Simple. Not that he doesn't know where you are. He's not looking physically. He's simply trying to bring to your attention that, man, you're in the wrong place. If you can align yourself back with me, you will get the vision and the purpose for your life. Let me surprise you. Mm -hmm. That is a prayer God answers quickly. Yes. Because it's the desire of his heart for mm. you to know that. Mm. Don't ask, well, how do I ask? Ask. Ask. In your language. Whichever <laughs> Whatever way language, you're limited. Your way. God has ways of mm. bringing the answers to you. Yes. Because this is so much in his heart. Listen, if God determined to send himself to die in the earth for this, mm -hmm. How much effort will he put? L let me explain how serious this is. If you look at the New Testament, there's a guy called, uh, th this guy in Joppa, um, I'll remember his name, where Peter has to be sent by God to go speak to him. He says, his prayers have come up to me. I am responding by sending you, Peter, to him. I don't care your prejudice. I'm responding to that. I'm telling you, journeys we have made. When you speak to God about this, we've not taught men to pray. We tell women to pray. This is the problem. Is it wrong for women to pray? No. But woman, now I'm talking to you. If your husband is sitting, doing nothing, doing nothing first of all realize it's because a dream was killed. Mm, yeah. Before you get angry. And let me tell you, many dreams were killed in church. That's the truth. Because men of God, with all due respect, God didn't raise us to rule men. Mm. God raised us to raise men. And raise him to himself. Simple. Taking them back to their father. Let's not be so busy raising our spiritual sons. They are not. They are his sons. Mm. We must raise them to become sons of God, not sons of men. I think it has become a big thing now that if you speak to anyone, the first thing they ask you is, who is your spiritual father? I think the best question would be, who is, who your, is your father? father? Because if your father is God, it yes. doesn't matter who your spiritual father is. Your spiritual father is a son of God, yes. like my spiritual father is. Yes. So now we have twisted, and that's what we're talking about, Genesis chapter 3, where we are defining ourselves. We've defined so much that we have even redefined the church. That now you're raising sons of men, not sons of God. You see, we've allowed the spirit of Nimrod. And if you're called Nimrod, I'm not attacking you. I'm talking about the spirit of Nimrod. Mm -hmm. The spirit of Nimrod, the Bible says that Nimrod became a mighty hunter of men. Mm -hmm. He was hunting men mm -hmm. and creating cities, controlling them. He's the guy who created cities. So the whole idea is this. Every man needs to find his place in God. Adam was found in the garden tilling. Mm. Every time we talk about what God is, uh, Jesus died, had to go to a garden to get the will of the Father for him. Mm. This is the principle. Father, nevertheless, not my will, but, but yours. Mm. This is the core issue. Now for women, are you a helpmate? Yes. You go back to your position called helpmate. 
the first help your husband needs is your prayer that sends him back to the garden. Remember you are a life giver. We are saying that even when you pray for him, Give him you life. are bringing life to him. That is the life we are talking about. Yes. This man is sitting on a couch the whole day. He does not work or even he goes to work and comes back and tells you nothing seems to be working. He's waiting for you. Meanwhile, your womb to that, nurture yeah. that idea. Meanwhile, that woman mm -hmm. who has got that capacity to help is busy interceding for the nation. Leave the nation alone. Intercede for your nation and that's your man. Leave. <laughs> the entire creation is waiting for the call that is in your man mm. and you're busy praying for the political party. Yes. Leave it alone. Yeah. Leave your church alone. Yes. Stop praying for the vision of your church. Mm. Until your husband is in the garden is when you'll get the vision of what else to pray about. Yes, but right now without that, pray for your man. Only one thing, mm. for him to return. return for him to, to return garden. to the garden. That's the primary call you have. Mm. You get that call right. Watch him flourish. Watch him step into his place and watch him begin to shift to a new dynamic. And I think also maybe this is just quick to say here that do you realize if you as a woman do not pray and put your man who is doing nothing. Yes. Yeah? You find a man who is doing nothing. Now this is just a paradox. Mm. He's doing nothing. He's not working. He's not providing. Then you hear the same woman saying, he has another woman out there. How? How did he get that one? With no job, With no, nothing. no vision, no nothing. The other woman is providing the womb. Simple. Don't allow your man to get a womb somewhere Outside. else. He will take the seed out there. And I'm telling you, if we come back and realize, it's not that we are saying the men should be excused for sitting on the couch, doing nothing and not flourishing. We are saying, listen, the men need the power in the woman to flourish. He can be alone doing right now. And now I'm sure there are people watching us and saying, you know what? 40 years we've been doing everybody their own thing. Let's look for the joy. And half the time the joy was found in another woman outside the marriage. That's the truth. And you know what happens, women? You mistakenly believe that if you go, you'll find a better man. Mm. There's no better man. There's a man in your paralyzed man, 38 years. Yes. He needs to arise. He's been at the pool 38 years. It's time for him to arise, pick up Take his bed and walk. and walk. This is the reality of where we need to go as a body. Mm. We don't understand this. And ministers, I say this with all due respect, I'm a minister myself with a community and a congregation. It is true God designed every woman to be around a man who is in the presence of God. Mm. Men of God, we have replaced husbands. We have to stop it. Mm. Mm. We can't have women gravitating around us when they should be gravitating around their husbands. Sorry to say, but the kind of money the women take to church, if they gave it to their husband who is sitting in a couch, he would arise, he would arise and move. And walk. Some things is just common sense. <laughs> <laughs> that if today I'm taking a seed, to, to, I'm sowing a seed for my husband to do a business. Stop. Take that money to him. And you and him stand together as a team. And don't leave and it in his him. hands. Yes. You are the natural. You are you the, are the natural. life giver. Do it. Just activate. Yes. Give him the environment. G give life. Sustain life. Yes. Listen, Eve took of the tree and gave her husband and he ate. Reverse the model. Yes. Take of life. Give your husband and let him eat. Yes. Either. From there he will arise. Is the life he giver. will arise. Yeah. You are the life giver. Yeah. If we understand these paradoxes, we'll begin to see with a different eye the reality. So are we excusing men? No, no. not at all. <laughs> we are saying every man should listen here and you arise. Don't look at your wife. Mm. Look at your garden. Mm. If, listen, we also have men who think their wives are witches. Yes. You think your wife is this crazy person who just does things, <laughs> she's going everywhere. Listen, she is going because you are out. Mm. Mm. You have triggered her movement. Yes. If you step back mm. into the kingdom, if you step back in the presence of God, she will arise and become what she's supposed to become. <laughs> this is the principle. And on that hot note, <laughs> see you in the next segment.